Richard Finley and Keith Gottschall uh, out of Colorado have both recently put up videos on converting the Wadkin RS lathe into uh, a variable frequency drive speed control control center. And although they've done a marvelous job, I'll give you my input as I'm a bit of an expert in the VFD conversions. Now both Richard and Keith have two-speed motor uh, drives for the RS, meaning there is a low-speed motor winding and a high-speed motor winding, which gives them a larger range. Of course, the VFD uh, doesn't require that at all, and so I'll show you what I would do, which is different from what they've done. I would not connect to the high-speed side of the motor, or the 3600 two-spole two uh, motor. I would hook to the low-speed motor and raise the frequency drive uh, uh, frequency to 120 so that I can double the speed of the low-speed motor, which is basically the high-speed motor. The advantage of this is when you lower the frequency below its rated uh, um, frequency, it is directly related to the horsepower, and so if you lower it to 30, you're at half the horsepower of the original motor. Whereas if you use the low speed motor and double its frequency, above the motor's frequency nameplate, it's, it remains at constant horsepower. And so there's much more horsepower directly at the chuck. Now I do leave it in the same position they do, the third position. But in this case, I'm overrunning my single speed motor, which the originals were the slow speed uh, motors, okay? So it's better for the motor cooling, it's better for so many, many other things. Now, what I did is to turn the, uh, the uh, well, the, the lathe on, I ran mine through uh, the control box that came with the machines. And now I can just push the buttons that they came with to turn my lathe on. And it happens to turn the light on at the same time. That's what those first two buttons are, including the emergency stop. Now the VFD is livening up and these are my controls, both stop and start right there. That's not a great convenient place. So I have another control station that is articulated. Sorry, the belt's slipping there. I gotta put it back on. But this can move around to wherever you want. In fact, with VFDs, you can have as many control stations as you'd like. And so basically, that's what I do. I do the low speed connection to the motor and uh, raise my frequency output. What's good about the forward and reverse is, is I don't push stop to go forward and reverse. I've programmed to, you could be in forward mode and push reverse and it will program the stopping and then go into, you don't need to do any control. So you wanna go forward reverse, that's already done. What's great is the braking sector can be balanced for either forward or reverse, meaning I can take the stop time it takes in forward to a different rating than the stop time it takes in reverse. And you might ask what the importance of that might be. Well, if you have a big piece on the lathe and a chuck, you sure don't want the inertia of that big piece spinning that chuck off of its threads. That wouldn't be too good, would it? Anyway, try hooking up to the lower speed side and uh, increasing your frequency and uh, getting all your controls. Anyway, I got a key lockout, emergency stop, everything there, boom. Everything shut down right there. That's the beauty of variable frequency drives is you can do so many things that you would have never imagined you can do. But how cool is that little con uh, articulating arm control, explosive proof switch gear, my favorite. And the fun continues on the RPM displayed on variable frequency drives and our lathes. Now, if you have one of my drives, I have what's called the C-Suite. And if you come over here, I've got a little side button, so Keith Gottschall could do this. Currently, I'm set at 60 hertz, because what I'm going to do is program the display here in the C functions to display the RPM at the spindle. And that takes two programs. 
Uh, basically, it takes in the C functions, which I'll show you in my book how you read that. But basically, if we go to this side arrow, you can see that there's CO1, CO2, CO3, CO4, CO5, and C00. So I'm going to program C00. And I've programmed that to display motor RPM. But what we want is the spindle RPM. And so we have to go to another parameter that enters the coefficient, which is basically a percentage. And gears can work that way. But we don't even need to do that if my thing is, is in the third position. I need to read 1500 at 60 hertz. And so we'll start. And now you're seeing the RPM. And you can see, uh, Look at that, okay? Now I can see function out of that, and there we're back to the 60 hertz. So if I want to go back into RPMs, I just go to C00, and there's my RPMs. So now when we change the RPMs, there's my RPMs. Isn't that cool? I'll show you it in the book. So if we open the manual, um, we're going to go into the very first functions. You're allowed to do this in uh, this VFD. And here we are at the display parameter selection when operating. Now the C functions can display information, which is listed here. There are 51 entries, and any one of these numbers correspond to what is on the C function display. And there are six different displays when running. And there's another six when at rest. And in fact, I'm not sure, I think there's up to 14 different um, entries you can make. So factory is set to 51. It in, and 51 is frequency after acceleration. So we're going to go to 7, which is motor speed. So we're going to put enter F0001, enter 7, and now C function that I showed you will display motor RPM. That's part 1. Now part 2 is uh, the RPMs, and that is F0017 motor speed display coefficient, which is a percentage. Currently, the factory setting is 100%. And so all you need to do is take the motor RPM listed on the motor plate and divide it by the number that's on your dial. And that'll give you the percentage. Now there is some slip, and so you can adjust, that'll get you close and then you can uh, zoom it in. So that is motor speed display F0017, motor speed display coefficient. So have fun with these. There are, as I said, 51 inputs and up to 14 displays. I think it goes up to F, uh, F14, slip run. Uh, like if you, you, can, you can put stuff the display on my drives till the cows come home. Thanks for watching.